Hai hai, uh, I'm Evan Alfred Hamami coming back again in Cerita Dari Seberang Oke, okay, finally I'm in episode 25 and it's so happy, uh, I'm so happy Like always, I always happy in every weekend and I always happy to have this kind of cerita dari seberang So today, I have such a case which is, hmm, I don't know, she is very incredible She is outstanding and, and I met her when I was in the university and when I was in the bachelor degree So I will invite her because mm, she is uh, the one who work uh, work in Hong Kong right now work in football club which is the mo- favorite and famous football club okay i will try to invite her hello kak terry it's been a long time to never talk with you to never see you back okay so i hope that i will tr- i will get such good time to um, to see you back okay so kali ini kita bakal ngobrol sama Diani which is Diani sekarang lagi bekerja di Barcelona Football Club and her base in Hong Kong so I will try to invite her but she, uh, I know she is still not online yet but it's okay so uh, today as usual this is like the segment that I always create to encourage people to finally understand what kind of the thing or what kind of the stories from across Whew, it's also make my stress release actually because I don't know like if I'm in every weekend I don't have an opportunity to talk with or maybe I also have such precious time to gather with all my friends in the real life so I will try to invite a lot of people from this kind of loop okay so Diane is online now so I will try to invite her which wait 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 okay Diane mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay okay mm-hmm. so um, buat teman-teman yang mau nanya atau langsung komen silahkan langsung komen saat kita live wow hello <laughs> <laughs> Aku boleh ngomong lah, hello kembaranya nih kita Willy. <laughs> Oke, okay, Diani, thank you so much for your time. Actually, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I know that you are very busy, and now you are, you still have a time for me to come with me, for sure. In cerita dari seberang, how are you there? I'm good. I'm doing well here. Far from family, but so far so good. Yeah. How okay. are you? I'm good. I'm good here. Uh, yeah, as usual, because my work, uh, I work remotely, sorry. So I have like a lot of time to uh, to spend my time with my family here. Uh, that's why I'm too here. So, ah. Diani. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> She's Diani my cousin, Tilia. actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Her name is Diani too. <laughs> anyway, Diani. Uh, as long as I knew you, I don't know. Like it's been like five years. I never met you, and since in the university, I think. More. I think, I think it's more think... than five years. I think it's like uh... seven years, maybe. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Uh, anyway, so what about COVID-19 condition in Hong Kong? Uh, it's still under control, actually. Like, every day we just got, like, one digit, which is, like, less than five. And, yeah, everyone now, like, mm-hmm. still got the vaccine. And I think the, how to say, the awareness to, like, uh, do the precaution about, like, uh, COVID-19 is quite high here. So people, like, mm-hmm, try mm-hmm. to be as clean as they can and they do a lot uh-huh. of, like, social distancing. So that's why the result here is kind of, like, good, actually. Still under control. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, guys, uh, sebelum kita ngobrol terlalu jauh, before we are talking, like, too far, so I will let you know who is Diani. Diani is my um, my junior. I don't know, like yeah, yeah, my junior. But we are in the different major. 
Uh, Dian from the Communication Management Science in Brawijaya University. She took a bachelor's degree in that university. We also participated in ISAC at that time. And I met Diani with Octifani for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Because she, she, both of them always uh, good, they always went together at that time. And Diani until also now. A, <laughs> until now, yeah. And then... Uh, Diani also had uh, all participate in Gobo volunteer in ISAC at that time. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Diani participated mm -hmm. in Philippines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe you can talk, uh, you can tell everything about your bachelor degree uh, story. But before that, now because you are now living in Hong Kong, yeah, as I mentioned before, that now you are living in Hong Kong and then you also work internationally which is uh, all of the, a lot of, a lot of people there are from international sites too so why diani must work abroad okay so uh, yeah maybe thank you for the questions i start with my journey in isaac before yeah mm -hmm. must uh um, uh, you were right that uh, i was joined like exchange student before because like first I came from, I'm actually came in from like a very small island, which is Lombok. And I didn't got a chance a lot to like interact with like a foreigner. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, going abroad is always my dream. So when I went, uh, when I went to university, I saw the ISAC booth and just want to join. And I went to Philippines mm -hmm. and went to the country where at that time I couldn't speak English at all. I just uh -huh. can't say like, I just could say like hi and that's it. So I was forced to learn English in Philippines. Uh -huh. But after after I went back to Philippines, I realized that actually if we force ourselves to the limit, we can achieve anything. Mm. So it starts right. from that moment. It starts from that moment that I want to prove myself how far I can go, how far I can uh -huh. achieve. So uh, that's why, like, after I joined ISAC, I joined a couple of, like, outside ISAC. I want to still, like, oh, outside this organization, what I can do internationally. So I joined, yeah. like, a research association. So I joined, mm -hmm. like, I wrote some, like, a journal. And mm -hmm. I, like, send them uh, send them my journal. And uh, I I got a chance to, like, speak in that at that event. So uh -huh. that's how I got it. So actually, when you ask me uh, why I must to work abroad, it's actually not a must. Actually, I'm a type of person that think like, if there's any change, I'll take it. So, okay. so I just like, I'm being opportunist so much. So I just see what I can see. If there's opportunity for me and suitable for me, I just take it. So yeah, actually, actually that's what's behind okay okay sure so anyway is it your wildest dream sorry is it your wildest dream uh actually i have more wildest dream i was about to say like it's still like a uh, half of the okay. wildest dream that i have so yeah i'm still far away from the wildest dream so it's just like the process to be there so yeah <laughs> Okay, okay. So for your information, guys, uh, if you can see from uh, Diani uh, LinkedIn, Diani ever work uh, in yeah and in, in contact PTE yeah in contact. Uh, she became marketing partner and also a senior marketing consultant. And after that, she came uh, she came to AWS Coach, which is this is Amazon, yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. This is the Amazon Web Service, actually, and um, uh, Indiani also became influencer at that part, and now she becomes Short East Asia Business Development Manager. Wow! At Football Club Barcelona. Oh my <laughs> God, Diani! <laughs> so, anyway, before we we jump into those stories, yeah, into uh, your working experience. I really want to know about your uh, your experience where you were in the bachelor degree. Uh, maybe you just told me like a slight story when you were in the bachelor degree, like you didn't speak English very well at that time, and now you prove that uh, if you push to the limit, now you can uh, show to everybody 
that English is very easy to be to be learned. So now I'm really curious about your uh, bachelor degree life story. When you were there, uh, what is the big motivation for you? Uh, what was the big motivation for you to participate in Asian participant in Philippines? The biggest motivation, I think, like uh, actually, it came when I was in high school. So mm. I was like a very ordinary student, how to say, like uh, I was yeah. like really, really like a very lazy student. So I thought mm. that everything will be come easy, easily to me. And then when I uh, when I went to join university, actually I got like uh, rejected first. So I wanted to be a dentist at that time. So I got rejected, uh -huh. and then I got uh, I tried uh -huh. second uh, second trial, how to say second second examination. So I got like the how to say at that time it was yeah. like mandiri. So yeah, so I joined like communication uh -huh. science, and then I was like rethink about uh, rethink again about my purpose. Like oh, if the failure is this hard because like my parents were really sad because i uh, i couldn't join the dentist university at uh, dentist like faculty so i just like okay i want yeah. to prove to my parents i want to prove to my parents that actually this lazy girl this lazy girl here that is coming from a very <laughs> small small island small city small like a uh, high school can prove to them that i can do better so actually my biggest motivation is my uh my biggest motivation of course my parents uh, and also mm -hmm. yeah because they they did a lot for me so i just want to prove to them that what they spent for me is worth mm -hmm. so i just want yeah i was i just want to show them that and then actually i also want to say thank you for isaac because like uh -huh. since i joined isaac i met a lot of like very cool people so mm -hmm. they were really like showing me that they are they are passionate about about their dreams so that's yeah. why i just went that's true yeah i i when i met like isaac people i was like at first actually i was really like shocked actually where are these people coming mm -hmm. from why they are so cool so i never met mm -hmm. them before but they just inspired me by just one second I met them so that's why I think uh, it was a very good uh, a very good decision actually to join the exchange uh, exchange like uh, volunteering program for my sex so that's why <laughs> uh, I see I see so Anu, what did you learn uh, by the exchange experience when you were in the Philippines what I learned is uh, actually the the most unforgettable experience that I, lear that I learned from that exchange, party, uh, exchange program is like how we can survive actually. I mean like uh -huh. you, went, you went to a country that you know nothing about that country. You met like a lot of like uh, people with different backgrounds, with different like cultures. So uh -huh. you learn, you learn like, you learn how they're doing things, you learn like how cool their dreams so yeah i think like being adaptable is what i learned from exchange i mean like yeah uh, adaptable anyway anyway Diani, uh do you think do you think yeah in, in your opinion I, i'm asking your opinion do you think that uh being a participant being an exchange participant like the first experience mm -hmm. on yourself it's like addictive bro isn't is yes, it true or not yes. like I, you know when when we were had like that moment we became an extra participant we always thought that how do i get an, an another opportunity to go around like yes, how do yes, i get yeah. this moment again right yeah 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 uh -huh. i i think i i agree with you it's just like an addiction actually it's very addictive experience yeah, that you yeah. still want to like you eager to get it more, get it more, yep. and get it more. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's not like you experience it once and you stop, but it's more mm -hmm. like what I can do more, <laughs> so what I can yeah. get more. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. So Diani, after you graduate from the university and you came to one of uh one of the company, namely mm -hmm. Contact, which is it based in Singapore, right? So you worked in Singapore at that time after you graduated from the university. 
No, no, no. Actually, contact uh, was established in Singapore, but then we uh -huh. uh, operated in Indonesia. But then, like, mm -hmm. uh, actually, like, contact contact have uh, has a lot of like products that uh, one is like mm -hmm. uh, one is like at that time one is like a marketing solution and and uh, CRM. So I work in a marketing solution, but I ha handle a lot of like project abroad. So that's yeah, that's how contact is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then you became consultant, right? And partner and senior marketing consultant at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes. how did how did you learn from that position? Which which is, uh, if we we were if we are talking about the consultants, which means that we will have like uh, a lot of communication with other people. Yes. Like we, you also found like so many people out there with the diff, with various cultures, like exact uh, like that part. So, how did you learn in that position actually, Diani? Uh, actually, it was quite unique. When I joined Kantak, I was the first hired for the marketing position. So mm -hmm. at that time, my CEO was like asking me like what we can do actually. So uh, we had like at that time like because we were in a very beginning because it's a startup, it's very beginning beginning okay. phase. So uh, we have one product which is like marketing consultant. So at that mm -hmm. time, because I have like the uh, how to say like ambition to work abroad. So uh -huh, I tried uh -huh. to find I tried to find a lot of like customer or a lot of like clients from abroad. So that's uh -huh. why uh, if you see my LinkedIn, I say that I handle a lot of like uh, a lot of like a marketing uh, marketing event or marketing like uh, campaigns yep. for my client yep. abroad. Yeah, just because like I really want to experience like how to handle projects abroad. So what uh -huh. I learned from Contact is like uh, I met a lot of like uh, very um, how to say it, like a very important clients, and mm -hmm. I learned how to how to handle like high level communication because like uh. my client for example like NTT NTT is from Japan uh, and yeah, I met yeah. the director I um, I was a direct like uh, contact for mm -hmm. for this project so being able to like uh, sharing my idea, also giving the solution to uh, to my clients, mm -hmm. and uh, telling them like how to run the project. I, I think like those uh, uh, those experience, those like uh, opportunities that I got from contact uh, were the most like how to say like incredible thing to learn from, from yep. this company. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. Wonderful. And then. After that, you spent like four years more in this company and you continued uh, to work in Amazon a Web Service, which is it's also incredible, uh, Yanni. You know, like, I don't know, when, when people asking about Amazon, everyone knows the year. Yeah, everyone knows actually, this. Like... Yeah, actually, I, I want to clarify a bit here. Uh, uh -huh. I wasn't really, I wasn't really working under AWS, but uh -huh. I was handling the project from them. So I was like the, uh, oh. I was AWS my client. So I handled that scout project for them. So through me, I introduced AWS to like startups in like Southeast Asia. But then, yeah, uh, of course, like I, I was like the, the person, how to say the bridge between like uh -huh. AWS with the startup, so yeah, that's how it is. But yeah, we can say that I was working for them, and that's why we. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm allowed to, uh, how to say, I, I was the representative of AWS at that time to meet like startups to give them the credit uh -huh. to give them like, uh, how to say, the voucher to access AWS for free. So yeah. Okay. 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 Sure. So, Yanni, uh, then you continue to work in uh, Football Club Barcelona, right? Yeah. Until now, <laughs> as short as Asia Business Development Manager. Could you please tell me like a little bit before, <laughs> like, how did they, uh, how did you get this opportunity? Or maybe if you have like another story, like the, that company invited you, directly through the LinkedIn or something like that. So could you please tell me about this? Uh, yeah, actually it's quite unique because 
uh, before before I met FC Barcelona, I spent about like one year to connect with recruiters. How to say like being friendly with the recruiters from abroad. You know, like mm-hmm. recruiters who work for, for example, if we can mention about a brand like Michael Page or Hayes or ah, whatever yes. it is. So I try yes. to be friend with them. So I just like telling them like, uh, hey, uh, I know that you, I know that you work uh, uh, in this company. Just in case, if you have like very interesting like openings, don't forget me. So that's how how I was doing it. So that's why after one year. Uh, uh, After I one see. year, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I receive a call. I receive a call from uh, my recruiter. I have to say, like, it's actually not really a recruiter. Actually, someone that I knew. So she called me and then say, like, "Hey, Diani, like, I, I, I saw that there's an uh, this opportunity. Probably you can like get techy. I mean, like, you can try." So and I said, "Okay, what is the company?" And like, then she told uh-huh. me. Like, oh, FC Barcelona. I said, wow, FC Barcelona. I said, oh my God, my parents will be so proud of me if I work here. I said, because, I, because I, you know, like I have like two siblings, both of them, uh, both, both of them are males. So they are like, yeah. really into that kind of thing. So that's why I like, oh, okay, I'll take it. So I apply on that, uh, on this mm-hmm. opportunity and I got interview and the thing is like the process was very long. It's like nine months. Uh. Nine months uh, like uh, interview, so like, it was like on and off, especially because of uh, COVID nineteen. So uh-huh. yeah, so that's why like when I heard about them and the mo- I think like what they really interested in me, I think uh-huh. like it was my background uh-huh. because I I came from Indonesia, I yep. studied in Indonesia. And for uh, FC Barcelona or for like any football club, like Indonesia, mm-hmm. always their biggest market in Southeast Asia because of yeah. course uh, football is our first, how to say, like our most favorite like uh, sport. Sports, Everyone yeah. loves football, mm-hmm. so that's why they uh, they see Indonesia as the most uh, uh, the biggest potential market for them, and they see. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm a very like local person that is like learning about uh, a lot of things. Uh, so they see like they they can feel like if I want to enter Southeast Asia, who should I hire? And then I feel like oh, uh, of uh, course, of course, it's me. <laughs> if you want to hire someone from Southeast Asia, hire me because I know a lot of things for uh, for Southeast Asia. Uh, so, uh, so you should, you <laughs> must hire me. So that's why. Of course, I, that when I learn about the uh, opportunity, I also heard that my competitors, how to say, people that applied to this job were very, mm-hmm. uh, how to say, high background. Yeah. So, were like they had like a master degree abroad. They are like studying mm-hmm. abroad and everything. Mm-hmm. So, but the things I want to tell everyone here is like, no matter where you're from, no matter yep. you just have a bachelor degree. The most important thing you have to show to people is your your confidence, <laughs> because yes, sure. even if you matter, even if you compare to other person that is like very very like having maybe twenty years experience, having yeah. a lot of like degrees uh, behind them, mm-hmm. but then like if you sell yourself as someone that is confident, as someone that is like hey. You want you want to get you want to get this person get me because I'm yep. I'm more suitable. So you you don't want people to judge you because like oh I'm 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 from a very uh, I'm from like a local university. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. That's yeah. So okay. no matter where you're from, just be confident. <laughs> that's awesome actually. But Diani, <laughs> if I may ask, because uh you know yeah you are woman. And then do you do you I mean like do you interest in football before? Uh yeah, I think like I I have an interest in football because uh-huh. like, yeah in Indonesia you watch football you watch football a lot and I learn uh, I watch a lot of like football match especially when I was like a kid because like my brother was uh-huh. really into football. 
really into like uh, yeah Premier uh-huh. League, La Liga, and everything. So yeah, I follow a bit of football actually. But if you ask me, am I really big fan of football? I have to be really <laughs> honest. I'm not really a big fan, <laughs> but I have an interest in football. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, it's it's kind of issue, yeah. Is there in your company right now? Uh, is there any like gender equi- equality or not? Or maybe case because you are uh, you are women, and then uh, maybe in this uh, company relate or dominantly into the man or something like that. Uh, so they, how do they uh, appreciate you as a woman? How do they give you a lot of opportunity as a woman there? I think like if we talk about like a football industry in general, uh, to be honest, like we will see more men there. So uh-huh. in my company, in my company, uh, I can say like, uh, yeah, we have more men there, but then how they treat us, they treat us really like nicely, how to say they're really like, Uh, the culture is like they really they really like not differentiate us so uh-huh. they really appreciate your talent you they really appreciate your uh, capability of doing things so yeah i okay. think like it, it's a good thing in in the company yeah. wow so the first time when you are accepted from this company and you told to your parents and your siblings how do they respond this news they were they were really happy of course and they were like uh actually like teasing me a bit about like hey you never you never you never did sport why you join sport because i'm i'm a very lazy person i if you ask me what kind of sport that i usually do on daily life i did uh I do nothing, so so they okay. ask me like, oh, if you join, if you join this company, you should do more sport. And I can, okay, sure, sure. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> so anyway, Tiani, uh, is it your first time you were living? You are living in Hong Kong. Living, oh, living you, for yeah. long term. You mean? Yeah. Yes, yes. For living in long term, yes, it is my first time. But before. I live here, not really live. I mean, like I stay here for probably like one or two months. Ah, uh-huh. so, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> so Annie, with, with this condition, you work abroad, you live abroad. Do you still have any like shock, a culture shock? In Hong Kong, yeah. I think yes, yes, because like in Indonesia. I feel like people there were a bit chill. How to uh-huh. say? Yeah. If you yeah. walk, you can you can walk slowly. If you order things, mm-hmm. you can take your time. And if you if you go to the restaurant, you can just like uh, asking a lot of question, and you, they treat you like a king. How to say? Yeah. Uh, but here, I find it very very interesting actually. When you uh-huh. when you go to the restaurant, yep, you will find that the waiters will ask you to be fast. Uh, for example, if you take time to uh-huh. say, "Oh, what I want," and then they will say, "Oh, faster, faster." So I really, I feel like they are always in rush. I don't know why, but yeah, I think I think that is like we have to adjust. Yep, yep, so. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. yeah. So we can we can say that Hong Kong is like uh, New York in Asia. Yeah, I never been to New yeah. York actually. <laughs> but, 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 but no no no, we we both we both never live or uh, stay in New York. But uh-huh. if we watch from the uh, from movies, we know that like the people in New York are living in rush and they work like in very rush thing and stuff like that and. Yeah, when I had experience movie. in Hong Kong, <laughs> uh-huh. I had experience in Hong Kong. I can compare. Uh, I can compare into the Singapore at the time. Like, you know, Singapore is like quite similar with Hong Kong. The mm-hmm. way they develop in uh, the way they develop uh, in their country is like quite similar. 
but mm -hmm. I don't know. Like Hong Kong is very rush. Everyone's rush, and you know when uh the time like go go to school and go to work like that, and people are like running. <laughs> I don't know. Like oh my god! It, it, okay, that's also the first time I was shocked. Such, I was thinking like how. Uh, why they should run like if you really want to go at seven maybe or your your office will be started at seven you can go at six you can still chill to, like something like yes, that yes, but yes. i don't know they they were like oh my god then I, it happened Running. yeah mm. I think I think I agree with you when I went because uh, before I was living in like Singapore for not really living how to say it, staying there for quite long and I, mm -hmm. uh, at that time I thought like people in Singapore always in rush how to say like yeah. I always thought that yeah. why are people in Singapore always angry at that time but yeah. I, right now I feel that. People in Singapore are actually more chill, <laughs> more chill. I think because in Hong Kong, I heard about my uh, from my friend that there's a lot of competition here. There are a lot of competition yes. happening everywhere. Like, so there are so many talents here. So if you just good, it won't be enough. But you have to be better, good, the yep. best. How to say it's like yep. combination. Yeah. So. Why people always in rush? Maybe because like they have a culture where like they have to be the first. How to say they have to be on time. Mm. They have to be. Uh, they have to be always be. How to say it, always be not late. How, yeah, something yep. like that. I yeah. think it's something. But you know, in Indonesia, if you have, I don't say that my country is mm -hmm. weird or something. But in Indonesia, if you go to the office. For example, your working hour, your working like uh, hours is like nine hours, and it start at nine a.m. But it's always okay for you to arrive around like nine thirty or ten a.m. Yeah. I don't know. It was my my ex I experienced that in my previous company, but then now <laughs> I cannot really do that. I mean, like, I have to really <laughs> wake up. I have to really wake up at uh, six a.m. preparing my lunch book and. Always like in a stressed mood, like I have to come on time today. So yeah, now I I becoming but, more and more rush as a person. But in <laughs> Hong Kong, do you also face uh like overtime work? Uh, I think it's an optional actually. It's an optional. Uh, I think they really. I mean, I don't know, but for my company, they really appreciate your uh your time. So if mm -hmm. there's uh, if there's any any like urgent stuff, they will like uh, politely ask you, will you be available, or uh -huh. will you be okay with it? But I I never work. I have to say like it's just like if you want to work, you work. But your company won't like really force you to do that. So yeah. So uh -huh. They even ask you, hey, why you stay here? You have you. you you should like eat your dinner. So I was like, wow, that's that's cool to be asked. Like, have I have I eaten dinner or not? So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so what about living costs? We know that Hong Kong is very expensive. <laughs> very, very expensive. Very, very. I think I think Hong Kong is one of the most. I think it's the most right. I heard yeah. like right. I heard the. I heard from the report actually now Hong Kong is the most expensive city country or yeah city in the world because like especially for their uh, renting for the property yeah yeah property so yeah people always complain about like oh half of our salary goes to <laughs> the renting the house or renting yeah yeah, yeah yeah yes so anyway how much for uh, now, how much for uh, the food if, in average? In average, I think when you eat outside, minimum, yeah. you will spend around 200k rupiah. <sighs> it was like a very long, it's, it's a so so, yeah? So so. so, so. <laughs> I, I think it's if, but if you go to like a big restaurant, you will spend at least like 
to 300 uh, Hong Kong dollar where it will be like around six 600k 600k mm. rupiah so yeah Woo. Woo. so it means but that uh, you cook your, by your own right yes yes i cook every yeah. day Uh-huh. I went to I went to the market every every uh, weekend to, uh, to buy some my like, stock for me to cook every morning. So yeah, not only because okay. of the price, but also like I'm a bit hmm, I'm a bit afraid of the if they put too much. How to say like if I eat outside and I have a bit of allergy to MSG. Because uh, I can easily uh, get headache, so that's why, okay. like, I recently noticed that I have to cook alone. So yeah. Ah, uh, I see, I see. So anyway, uh, Diani, after your long journey, after uh, you graduated from university, and then you uh, you got like your dream job. You were in the contact, and that now you uh, you were in the football club Barcelona in Hong Kong. So, do you ever see fellers, and how do you value uh, your feller? Yes, I experienced a lot of fellers actually. <laughs> It mm-hmm. was yeah. I think I think uh, what most people don't know about me, I. Mm-hmm. I think my journey to find where I am today, I mean, like to be who I am today, was yeah. quite like uh, ups and downs. So yeah. I told you before, like uh, when I want to join the university, when I wanted to join the university, I got rejected first. So uh-huh. that was like the biggest uh, lesson for me because before uh-huh. that I was really like I told you I was really like kind of like a chill person, lazy and such. Mm-hmm. So after that. And second things like also like I experienced failure when after I graduate I really wanted to work in Singapore actually that's uh, why I told uh, you like I spent uh, quite a long time there I mean like I spent mm-hmm. like two months one month or two months in Singapore to to find a job there and it was really like time consuming also energy consuming and also like uh, yeah there's a lot of Uh, emotional breakdown there because like most of you the companies spent two months yeah just to find a job to just in to Singapore find, like, in Singapore and you know like how, wow. I have, how 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 I have like a lot of like uh, not really like how to say emotional breakdown what uh, that I mentioned before were uh, coming uh-huh. from the uh, companies that were reject uh, rejected me because they say like oh I like your profile I like your experience in university but mm-hmm. you're not you're not experienced enough to get the visa to, uh, for for us okay. to sponsor your visa so it's like a it's like a gambling for us if we want to like uh, sponsor your visa because all your experience yep. We're coming from university experience, but you don't really have you didn't you don't really have a, a professional experience. That's uh, what yes. they told yes. me. So uh-huh. I was like, oh my god! Uh, at that time, I was thinking like, okay, now I will I will back to Indonesia. I will be back to Indonesia to get my to get my experience. And after uh-huh. that, that's why like uh, as you can. As you can see on my LinkedIn, I back to Indonesia, work in contact. I tried to get a lot of like project from abroad to just like prove this people yeah. like, hey, mm. even if you don't like give me visa, I still can work internationally. I, I mean, like I still can, I still can show yes. you that I still can show you like uh, it's it's worth for you to to sponsor my visa. Yes. So I told to that yes. to that company. So that's why I went like, back to Indonesia. My purpose, my goal is to get experience. And after four years, I brought in my journal. Okay, I will spend uh-huh. four years in Indonesia just to get international, uh, international like experience. And after okay. that, I will I will join a company abroad, and I will ask that company to uh, sponsor my visa. So that is my uh-huh. goal actually. So that's why that's why it was like this. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's kind of. a shock for me uh, 
because you were living in Singapore at the time after you graduated from your university. Mm. I actually know this story from Octifani at that time. Like I ever talked with her, uh, mm. like Octif said to me that uh, now Diani live in uh, in Singapore. So I suppose that when you were in contact, so you stayed in Singapore. You never stayed in Indonesia at that time. Like ah, literally, yeah. you never stay in Jakarta. So I always imagine that you were living in Singapore. So that's why when you say to me, when you told me like you were living for two months there, oh my God, like Singapore is not that easy, right? Like you know, easy, from, yeah. for, for Indonesian people, like we are every uh, graduate from a uh, bachelor degree. Active this year. <laughs> active here. We were we were talking about you. We were you, talking active. about you. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know uh, at the last time I chat to with uh, Octave and uh, she she went to a uh, UK yeah she went to UK to study from LPTP scholarship at that time and I was still supposing you that you are and uh, you were in Singapore to work there so uh, oh my yeah, god yeah. I just knew this oh my god <laughs> yeah I think I think it was a bit like a, a bit like confusing for for people, especially for my parents, because they know that mm-hmm. I work for contact in Jakarta, but then mm-hmm. I most of my time not really like I spend a lot of times uh, doing my project abroad, because like I jo- uh, 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 I did like a project for example in Malaysia, Vietnam, and yep. uh, uh, yeah, yeah and, uh, I forgot Vietnam, but, uh, yeah I forgot where I I did it. <laughs> but yeah, we always like doing our project abroad. So yeah, I think. But I stayed in Indonesia actually. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, I see, I see, I see. Oh, thank you so much. This is why I create this uh, cerita dari seberang because maybe a lot of people always suppose that when you are in the success uh, point, and then they never see that you ever go, to, you ever went through for the, some failures before. And this is the the reason why I create this. Like, oh my God, Yani, maybe a lot of people out there will suppose that you are now uh, living in your happiness, living in Hong Kong, and yeah, maybe because you are privileged one or something like that. But they didn't know that you strive for that big. Oh my God, thank you so much, thank you so much. Otif, kita kangen, kita kangen banget. Yeah, kita kangen sama Otif. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. anyway, uh, anyway, Diani, it's been uh, 42 minutes, so it's like uh, we will end this cerita dari seberang. But before that, I'll try to resume because maybe a lot of uh, people here will uh, uh, join in the middle or maybe in the last minutes. So, uh, I'll try to resume before Diani give last statement. So guys, uh, today I'm talking with Diani. Uh, Diani now working in football club Barcelona in Hong Kong. But before that, uh, she graduated from the university, Abraja University, for majoring communication management science. And she worked in after that she worked in Contact, which is it's like the startup company, and be, she became partner and senior marketing consultant for almost four years more than more in this company and she also handling project in our uh, amazon web service which is, is also the big uh, the big startup in the world now she is working in football club barcelona in hong kong as short east asia business development manager so uh, after she talked she's she talked with me she shares everything like the way she go through uh, a lot of journey before in this point and now she is living in hong kong with also a struggling a lot because she is living a lot and far from her family too it's also it's something like homesick or whatsoever we can say that but i hope that uh, maybe after this COVID issue um and i hope that i can see dian in hong kong and we can yes, travel yes. together <laughs> yeah i come here <laughs> and i will and I'll, of course i will invite optifani to to hong kong <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so uh Diani, thank you so much uh, for your time and for thank your you. uh, opportunity so could you please give uh give us last statement 
maybe like the last statement. the motivational statement or whatever we can say that <laughs> so uh, uh last statement from me i think like um, just be confident mm-hmm. uh don't don't care about what people say about you or mm-hmm. just be confident because like what people appreciate from you is not like what you have behind you but yeah what you can offer what you can change actually so yeah i just want to tell everyone here because i saw like my colleague actually um in, in my previous company also joined his, his name yeah, is Hafiz sure. so i want to tell you <laughs> Hafiz you have to be confident too so for everyone who watch it just be confident that's it yes <laughs> yes thank you so much Once again, thank you so much, Diani, for your time. Thank you also for thank your you energy so and positive vibes. Me. I hope thank that you. we can see you in real life, yeah, in uh, in Hong yeah. Kong for sure. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who was who watched this cerita dari Sprang. Bye bye.